Hello lovely people. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Loz. I talk about mental health and dogs mainly. Um, my channel is kind of a bit of a buffet at the moment, but I'm going to try and focus more on mental health. Um, so if you're in need of some good vibes and some support and some love, then you'll find it here. Um, but today I want to talk a bit more about dealing with anxiety, some kind of management tips for anxiety. And when I say management tips, I don't want to mislead you because I don't think there are any effective ones. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, so please, and it's, it's, it's not. Okay, so what do I mean by non-effective? anxiety management tips I don't know if that sentence was <laughs> made sense but <laughs> you get my gist um, I've had anxiety borderline personality disorder and depression for eight years depression I've recently overcome and I am going to do another video about that I think that's deserving of a video on its own but um, the point is I've had it for a long time <laughs> and in all of that time, I never found a way to manage my anxiety. I never found a way to overcome it. Even today, my depression, I would say, is, is gone. It's cured, yes, but I still get anxiety. Um, it is a symptom of borderline personality disorder, but um, I think at the moment I'm managing my BPD quite well. So kind of like it's kind of like a sub a subsystem of mental illness it's it's not really I don't really consider it to be a part of my BPD but um, what I found or what I find when I'm going to have an anxiety attack is I always try to delay it because I try to stop it from happening and in delaying it that emotion just wells up inside me and by the time I release it all it's explosive it's so much worse than what it probably would have been if I had just let it out at the start um, and usually in that time I'll self-harm or um, I will have suicidal thoughts or hateful thoughts towards myself or sometimes even other people um, which wouldn't have happened wouldn't have been there if I had have just acknowledged how I was feeling and just let it out you know especially for people with BPD um, you know people describe having BPD as like having an open nerve ending it can be extremely painful to have BPD because you just feel everything so intensely so much more than what the normal person does and that's on a chemical level that's the structure of our brains are uh, physically different to people with healthy normal brains without BPD so we really feel shit <laughs> and if I deny those feelings it's not going to change anything about me it's not going to restructure my brain or change my chemical balances or nothing it's not going to do anything it's just me denying how i'm feeling and making it all worse and i think that can apply for many people not just people with bpd because anxiety is an illness of the brain it's an illness like any other organ and that needs to be acknowledged it's not something you can just fight off with mental strength and if fighting your anxiety and fighting an anxiety attack is less healthy for you than just acknowledging how you're feeling and allowing it to flow and allowing it to happen but i think by all means you should have that anxiety attack you know like it's important to work towards health and it's important to work towards a place where the anxiety attacks aren't as intense or as explosive or as dangerous to you as maybe they are now but 
it's very hard for me to believe that you can completely be rid of anxiety you know it's a, it's a natural part of everybody's life it's a healthy part of life you need to have anxiety for caution when you are facing a risk but it's just the levels that you're feeling it at and I know for myself I had an anxiety attack the day before yesterday for the first time in since I quit my job that was the first so I quit my job because of issues that were all going there and I had an anxiety attack on the day that I quit to the point that I was having intense suicidal thoughts for the first time in a long time since that day I've not had an anxiety attack until two days ago and I was actually in a supermarket and there wasn't a lot I could do so and I certainly couldn't have the anxiety attack in public so I was putting it off I was containing it and I was trying to believe that I could not allow it to happen I was trying to believe that I could overcome it because I'm at the healthiest place in my life I've ever been but even at this point in my life I couldn't stop that anxiety attack I managed to get to my car and um, I, you know, was hyperventilating a little bit, gritting my teeth and crying. But because I'm in such a healthy place in my life, I didn't have suicidal thoughts. I didn't self-harm. I didn't vomit. I didn't faint. My hyperventilation was very, you know, mild. It was very mild. Um, and once I was able to get home and stop driving and just sit with... Naga and Ollie, um, I was able to soothe myself and calm down a little bit more, but I couldn't do that until I allowed myself to properly cry because I couldn't cry when I was driving and I couldn't cry when I was at the supermarket. So I got home and I just let it out where I could. And as soon as I did that, it was like, it was like I purged it. It's kind of like when you've had too much alcohol to drink or you've eaten too much food and you need to vomit and you don't feel better until you vomit. But once you vomit, you just like, oh, you feel so good. Like you feel normal again. That's exactly what it feels like with an anxiety attack. So I really think that the number one way to deal with anxiety is just to let it out, to just let it happen. But the way that you recover from your anxiety will change depending on how you manage your depression if you have it or how you manage any other mental illness that you have i think that's what kind of you know ingrains that real negativity and um weakens you so that you can't recover as much from the anxiety um now that i'm at such a healthy place in my life i recovered from that anxiety attack the other day so much quicker than i would have you know a year ago because the anxiety attack didn't result in suicidal thoughts or thoughts of hatred or self-harm it was just i was having a hard day you know and for normal people without mental illness for them you know their anxiety attack might be that they that they cry and they just they feel stressed and maybe their breathing's a bit labored for people with anxiety it's just that amplified um, and so it makes it harder to manage but if you can incorporate positivity and well-being into your life as much as you can in every other way then you'll be able to handle that anxiety so much better and in such a healthier manner um, and I actually talk about that I just filmed a film filmed a video on am I in the 20s about the law of attraction um, and the reticular activating system which is a system in your spinal cord which acts as a filter for your brain um, and it kind of um, sets your intent and sets your um, beliefs so and you can actually adapt that and change it and train it to be more positive so if you want to learn about that then I'll pop a link up above um, and you can go ahead and watch that one um, but yeah I really think you know just Treat yourself with love, treat yourself with positivity and kindness 
I think anxiety is all about the management and the recovery. It's not so much about trying to get rid of it um, because anxiety is a healthy part of life and life is hard. <laughs> so, of course, you're going to feel anxious and you shouldn't feel ashamed of it. Just treat yourself with kindness throughout the process. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I hope this helped and thanks so much for watching. Bye.